Greetings and Salaamu Alaikum everyone. Welcome to today's webinar training topic, Create a Great Speech. I am Bahish Saab, your webinar facilitator for today. I would like to welcome all of you on behalf of our District 79 webinar chair, DTM Akanka Abdel Khaliq, and our district leaders, District Director DTM Abdullah Sharif, Program Quality Director DTM Rashid Ali, and Club Growth Director DTM James Tarok. We are delighted you are all here and look forward to an informative session that will help you understand the components of, a de of developing a great speech. Let me introduce the talented team who will pre be presenting to today's session. First, we have DTM Kamal Khan, who joined Toastmasters in 1991. He has served as an area governor, and he currently works as an auditor for Saudi Aramco. Unfortunately, he didn't make it until now, but hopefully we will have him very soon. Our next presenter will be DTM Brinda Subasran, who has joined Toastmaster in 2007. She served as a club president, as an Area 70 governor, and enjoys every learning opportunity. She currently works as a head of ICT department for Al Hussein International Schools. Good afternoon, DTM Brinda. Good afternoon, Toastmaster Rage. Okay. Thank you for coming, for accepting today to deliver this presentation. It's my pleasure, thank you. And finally, we have DTM Lakshman Sokalingam. So he, he is a very enthusiastic Toastmaster. He has joined in 2003. He has served as a club president, as an area governor, He's also an ambassador for the Revitalized Educational Program, a chair for area, an area conference chair, assistant division governor for education and training, and currently serves as division edge director. DTM Lakshman works as a lecturer in English with King Abdul Aziz University in Jeddah and has worked as an English teacher as a second language since 1981. He looks very young. He served in India, Oman, Bhutan, New Zealand, and Saudi Arabia. Good afternoon, DTM Lakshman. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm fine, thanks, Tim Baki. Thank you, DTM Lakshman, for accepting to deliver two presentations about beginning and concluding a speech. You're most welcome. It's my pleasure. Thank you. I am Bahish Saab. I will be your facilitator for today. I joined Toastmasters in 2012. Now I'm the Vice President of Education for Jeddah Advanced Toastmasters Club, and I am an electrical engineer. Before getting started with our training, I want to let our attendees know how to be engaged. The first way, there are three ways to be engaged. The first way is to raise your hand by pressing the hand icon if you want to ask a question or make a comment. Second, you can type a question in the cell indicated in front of you in the speech. Or, and finally, you can respond to the session polls when they are launched. You have 30 seconds to your input and wisdom. Now let's get started. Let's, since DTM Kamal Khan is not available now, we will turn the presentation to DTM Brinda Subasran. She will be presenting about she will be presenting about organizing our speech. So I will give now the floor to DTM Brinda. Hello and good afternoon everybody. 
I welcome you to organizing your speech speaker speaker series module. Have you ever listened to a speech and wondered what the speaker was speaking about? Perhaps you didn't have a clue what the topic was about. If that has been your experience or you did not know how to graft a good speech, you are in the right seminar. This seminar is about organizing your speech. Toastmasters International has given you a basic formula how to organize your speech. It's just three points in case you're wondering. The first would be tell them what you're going to tell them. That would be your introduction. Next point would be tell them. That is the body of your speech. The last would be tell them what you've already told them. That's the conclusion of your speech. Now let's see how to develop an outline for your speech. The first and foremost would be to develop an introduction. That is, you're telling them what you're going to tell them. The, the beauty about an introduction is, in the first two minutes of your speech, you will have the privilege of capturing your audience if your introduction is very compelling. The next would be the body of your speech, where you tell them what you're going to talk about. Now, the body of your speech is actually the central, you will have the central point that is, let's say you're talking about success, success would be the central point of your speech and it would have, each, point, each idea would have points which would be backed by supporting material like statistics or quotations or anecdotes or jokes. So if you're talking about success, you would tell them what success means to you? Is it hard work? Is it a faith in yourself? Or is it becoming rich? And for each, you would have supporting material. So the body would have main ideas with supporting material. The end would be the conclusion. That is, you're telling them what you just told them. So you sum up what you've just said, and you finish your speech. Now let's see how to fill in the outline of your speech. If you're like me, you have a good speech topic, but then you're so anxious that you want to have a good introduction, you want to impress the audience with your good introduction, that sometimes you end up getting anxious or overwhelmed in giving a good introduction or grafting a good introduction. In which case, no worries, you can just go to the main idea of your speech and slowly branch out into the other, other parts of the speech. Now let's see how to do, how to effectively do this. The first point would be to list the key points. What's your central idea? Your central idea would be, let's say, for example, as we've just seen, your central idea about the speech is success. So you state your central idea and then you have a few statements about it. Let's say success for me means achieving my goals. Success for me means producing good results. Success for me means becoming rich. Success for me is becoming famous. Or success for me is becoming a good human being. So these are the, the supporting statements that you have for your main point. Now after you've written down your five or six supporting statements, you arrange them in an order so that it makes it is in a logical or sequential order. So you would say, for me success is producing results, achieving goals, becoming rich, becoming famous, or becoming a good human being. Now that you've listed down your points in an order, you expand on these points. You elaborate them with examples, anecdotes, statistics, jokes, whatever you want to do. So now you've expanded your points, you develop an introduction. While you're in the process of expanding these points, something will stand out or capture your attention and you'll want to start your speech with that, let's say a quotation or a statistic or a joke. Something will stand out while you're preparing and you can put that as your introduction. 
or you could ask a question with a show of hands and then you tell them what you're going to speak. The last would be to develop a closure. You summarize your speech, make a call to action and say, how many of you think success is becoming a good human being? Or just summarize, call for action and hand over the lectern back to the person who interviewed you. Just say, back to Toastmaster so and so and you finish your speech. Now, while a lot of us are um, comfortable in actually listing out and writing an outline while organizing a speech, some of us are not so comfortable with it. Perhaps you're good at drawing pictures and doing a diagrammatic representation of your speech. Then you create a mind map to do it. Now, what's a mind map? It's just actually a diagram that represents your ideas of a particular subject. So how does this help you? It helps you to discover the purpose of your speech. How, what can be included in your speech? In which order you can include them in your speech? So a mind map is useful in all these ways. So how do you start a mind map? Step one would be to print in the center of the page, take a big page, in the middle of the page, print your main topic and draw a circle around it. So now your main topic is success. You draw a circle around success and it stands out. What do you do after you do this? You put in the ideas about this main topic and draw a square or a rectangle around them and draw lines to connect them to the main topic so that they make sense. So you have about the main topic and they are all connected now. Now on a separate paper, let's say creating you're creating a main idea, that's your outline. So your outline of your speech will have what ideas? What will be the ideas for your speech? You'll have introduction, you'll have the body, and you'll have the end. So you connect them with lines to the outline, which is your main topic. This is how a mind map works. Now while you're doing this, you might get quotations and uh, statistics and anecdotes, but you don't put them all over your mind map. You take a separate paper and you add these things there. You put in your quotations and other extra material in your about your this topic in a separate paper, not on your mind map. And then you connect them to your mind map using asterisks or numbers or color coding so that it makes more sense and it's in a proper order. Now, I hope we've given you two methods of making, organizing your speech. Either you can write an outline or you can do a mind map. As Hesiod, the Greek poet, says, it's best to do things systematically since we are only human and disorder is our worst enemy. Thank you and I wish all the speakers good luck in organizing their speeches and making wonderful, memorable speeches. Bye. Good luck. Thank you, DTM and Brenda, for this presentation. I just would like to launch a poll for all of our attendees. You have 30 seconds to answer this poll. So what is, okay. the, what is the basic order for the speech organization? The first option, tell them what you'll tell them, tell them and then thank them. Tell them what you'll tell them, tell them, remind them, or tell them what you'll tell them, tell them, and leave stage. So the time has finished and the results are 30% said, tell them what you'll tell them, tell them and thank them. Tell them what you'll tell them, tell them and remind them, which is 60%. And 10% said the last option. Of course, the right answer is the second one. Tell them what you'll tell them, then tell them and remind them at the end, which is the conclusion. It seems that uh, there are... No questions for now. So uh, thank you, DTM Brenda, for this, for for this, for giving us your valuable time for 
today. Thank you, Toastmaster Beja. I enjoyed doing the presentation. Thank you very much. Now let's go to our next presentation presenter, DTM Lakshman, who will be presenting to us uh, the third uh, module about creating DTM uh, beginning your speech. The floor is yours, DTM Lakshman. One moment, please. Thank you. You are a presenter? Are you hearing me, DTM Lakshman? Yes, I'm with you. Are you able to listen to me? Are you able to hear me? Yeah, yeah, I'm hearing you, but I'm trying to share the screen with you. But you yeah. are not in the options. I don't know why. Let me check now. Ah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah, yeah, I'm ready. I'm going to show the uh, presentation. Ah, uh, it until now didn't. Are you going? Ah, uh, let me close the poll. Let me hide. Uh, yeah, I forgot. Okay. So I believe now the floor is yours, the TM Lakshman. Are you going to show the, uh, the, the PowerPoint presentation or just yeah, go ahead? PowerPoint presentation. I made you a presenter and yeah. and uh, I think you can start with, let's see. Uh, will it be showing or? It should be showing. Okay. Let me start. Very good afternoon to all of you Toastmasters. We are going to start our beginning our speech presentation. The first and foremost thing should be that we should be able to express ourselves with the excellent beginning. We should be expressive. Are you able to listen to me? DTM Lakshman, if there's somebody using the computer next to you, let him uh, lower the volume. Okay. Can we go ahead? Yes. First of all, we should be able to have good expression when we start the speech itself. We should be able to get the attention of the audience in terms of beginning the sentence itself should be very captivating. If the first sentence itself is quite captivating, the audience will be having the electrifying, uh, influencing force, and then they will be able to get up and sit and start listening. The next thing would be to introduce the topic. What do you mean by the introduction of the topic? The introduction of the topic should be, again, more alluring, captivating, for the people to understand that this topic is connecting me or connecting my experience. So that will, that will give automatically the next stage which is building the rapport with the audience. By rapport I mean the personal connection of the experiences what people they, uh, they, they have on a daily basis. It could be smile, it should be the eye contact we have with the audience, 
and it could also be the enthusiasm the speaker is showing through the utterances of the speech. So, is Professor Baki, are you showing the other slides as well? That's right. The slides are not appearing, unfortunately. I don't know what's wrong. Okay. So, I'll go ahead with the presentation. Okay. When we are connecting with the audience, we should have at least 10% of the entire speech time to be devoted for the beginning itself. Because I feel that this is the grounding stage for the speaker to settle on a particular topic on which he is delivering his presentation. So it's quite a useful time for the presenter or the speaker to spend at least 10% of the entire speech time in keeping that introduction. After stating the topic, the importance of the topic should be very clearly explained by the speaker. If the speaker is quite clear of the importance, he'll be able to leave more on that topic itself. He'll be getting a chance to tell the listeners why the topic is important to them. There are a variety of topics available. People can choose topics like teamwork, how could that be applicable from his perspective or from his experience or from his own uh, life meetings with people which stays in the mind for a long time in their life of people. After making that connection, after making that important statement, one should go to the next level of saying the statement. For example, the statement must be quite startling, surprising, quite mind-boggling sometimes. For example, the sentence itself, smoking kills. And if someone says, more, more Americans die each year than were killed in the battle during the Second World War and Vietnam put together. So this is how one can get the attention of the audience. Because this is not something which can be just heard and left as it is. So the statement must be very, very carefully uttered by the speaker. And the next one, next one of course, goes as the arousing suspense and curiosity of the people. There can be, there can be a series of statements related to the topic that would pick your listeners' interests. Ah, this is me. I came across this situation sometimes in my past, could be a few years ago, a few weeks ago. If that arouses a suspense, you're holding the audience in your hands. I think that is the very good part of beginning this speech because from this beginning you're moving on to the central portion or the body of the speech itself. So we are now dealing with the different aspects and different areas of beginning of the speeches. What we are now discussing are the different or the variety of ways in which one can begin the speech and move on to the central part called the body of the speech where again you can give more and more experiences and examples which will make people understand that yes, he has given something in the beginning, he is supporting with more of supporting statements. Well, how can we support the statement? How can we support the topic what I mentioned at the beginning? That could be done again with a personalized story or anecdote. For example, my brother and I went hunting last week in the woods behind my house. Well, that makes, that sentence itself makes the people or the audience understand that he is giving something sincerely, quite committedly, quite carefully, he has taken from his own personal experience. So that is again beginning the speech and makes the speaker or gets the speaker move on to that central portion called the topic which is going to rock the people. After doing this, one can again go and experience the in-depth meaning can be gone inside. 
There's another way of starting the speech or beginning the speech. Do you know what to do if your child begins to choke? Do you know what to do if your child cries uninterruptedly? These are the questions one can ask, which will again throw more inquisitive or curious thoughts in the minds of the listeners or the audience. So this is another opening technique as well. Some people have a very nice beginning of the speech. They say something, for example, all the world's a stage. If they start like that, oh, what is it going to say? All the world's a stage. And the next sentence, of course, it comes from William Shakespeare. They can even mention William Shakespeare, or you can go to the next sentence and then say, quote from the place I read from, the, from William Shakespeare. So this can, again, start the speech and keep the speech with that tremendous beginning, tremendous power. So the quotation can add authority to the speech because people believe that the quotations or the quotations followed by so many generations and this will add universal truth in the speech. Through that way, one can get again the uh, tenacity of approaching the con content itself. Again, next one is amusing the audience. Some people have the technique of starting it with the dramatization of the speech point. Why not? Go for it. Action, body language, eye contact, then the particular sentence which is going to capture the attention of the audience. That could be the beginning as well. Some people have the beginning as a reference point and they say it allows the speaker to remember an unusual or important event and establish again a common uh, thought or common influence, common interest with the audience. So there are a variety of ways. So one should be able to sit down and take a piece of paper. This is my way. This is what I'm going to do. That 10% of that speech time should be devoted for that particular special type of approach. When this happens, the audience will get the interest. After all, the speech is be the beginning of the speech should be something which must make people sit for a long time and listen. This person has got something for me to say, so I'm going to follow this. So these are all the different types of beginnings. There is not only one way of beginning. There are plenty of ways, but one should be able to choose a comfortable area in which the speaker himself is comfortable. It could be eye contact plus body language plus the starting sentence. It could be that connection with that one particular person sitting in the audience. Maintain that eye contact, build that in invisible connection. And then, are you the one who lost your thought the other day? Are you the one who lost yourself in that particular situation where you couldn't find anything else to come out? Are you the one who is positive? So if that is beginning, I think people will have wonderful the connections and they will feel that they are united, they are connected. As we have seen in so many world champion speeches also, when the world champion or any speech, speaker speaks on the stage, everyone is flabbergasted, everyone gets awestruck, everyone gets surprised. Oh, it's me. He's not talking about him. He's, not, he's talking about me. He's talking about my family. That way one can, I think, do a lot, lot, lot to improve the beginning of the speech. Ghostmaster Bahid? I'm here. Ghostmaster Bahid? Yes. Yep. Yes. I think I've uh, explained the okay. yeah, beginning, how it should be done. Okay, let's take a break for you and now give the floor to DTM Kamal Khan, who will be giving the presentation about, uh, about selecting a topic. Okay? Yes, sir. Thank you, thank you. Good, morning. Uh, good morning. Sorry about the, the, the mix-up. I, I, I thought I had a bit more time, so I got my times um, wrong. I got, can we have the presentation, please? My presentation, is that, uh, how do I get that up? Are you ready, DTM Kamal? I'm ready. Can my presentation be, be posted there? Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, yeah, I will give you, I will make you a presenter. Okay. Let's take a look at it. 
Okay, so the floor is yours. Okay. Is my, my presentation appeared? Yes, yes, it appears. Has my presentation? Yes, it okay. the screen is showing. Okay. Okay, good morning, uh, audience. Uh, I'm very happy to be here uh, and presenting on the, the first part of the, the, the this, uh, webinar about selecting your topic. Now, in order to select your topic, there, there were a number of different sources. You can, uh, the, uh, the, f the first thing, important thing is your personal experience. You can cover things, uh, your own, your own, your own experience is the most important, your interests, your, your career, your family, your, your education, all these things, uh, the, the, you can use them. Um, other thing is reference material. You can use websites, books, magazines, newspapers, etc. Uh, I'd just like to add something more about about uh, about the topics, about the choosing the topic. They actually the 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 information can you can actually divide them into four four different uh, in types of uh, topic. Firstly, there, there could be something that is informative. Then the informative would be something like your personal experience. For example, you you visited a museum, what you saw there. The second uh, kind of uh, topic uh, would be something persuasive. For example, why should why should uh, why should you take up a foreign language? You can talk about your favorite language, things like that. The third area is instructional, personal experience, how to make friends or be be more popular. The fourth area is uh, entertaining. For, for example, you could talk about your hobbies, your favorite TV shows, etc., things like that. Uh, the, the second uh, the second area is uh, for for choosing. We, we, we've got a wide wide uh, sort of uh, these days. We have access to a huge amount of information. I mean, it's it's almost uh, uh, unmanageable. And I mean, we've got the internet, newspapers, encyclopedias, books, and magazines. We have access to experts. We have television, satellites, and all these things. But I mean, the thing is that because nowadays the information is this, this these things you also realize that the easier uh, easier it is to get get information and get topics. Also, it also makes it more difficult to differentiate because other people also have have access to the the same information. So you might have people um, um, in a in a audience in, in, a, in a seminar and you could be talking about very much the same to how do you differentiate your speech so, so the, think about those things I mean the, the, the magic ingredient is your personal experience so you when you bring all your own, own experiences your lessons learned what you have learned from from things how, how it has people are people actually are interested in you as a person they maybe the, the topic you can really talk about anything I mean, I've given speeches in the past about about the weather, about the rain, about my cat, things. So that that what 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 this is this is really the topic is something to hang your experience, what what your 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 thoughts are, your processing, your your processes, how you came to be what you are from that. Then the other thing is to 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 get inspired. You start writing it, write it down. Very important to write write things down. Because when it's when you're writing things down, uh, sorry, uh, by writing it down, it, it helps you helps you clarify clar clarify your 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 train train of thought, and then that's when you realize well the logic of it. Does everything is everything logical? Does do do things flow from from beginning to end like that? And so this is the writing process. Is is it's a very and also it makes it objective. So you may have a great idea in your in your, your mind, but when you when you start writing it down, that's when you realize well I got maybe maybe I need to do some more research or then it's more more object, objective and you can also ask someone to review it for you have a look at it. So writing the writing process is very important. Then you should, uh, narrow your selection. So a very important aspect 
we cannot forget it. I mean, this is the you should be your, it should be your starting point is your audience, because at the end of the day, you you're not you're not trying to convince yourself. You're not trying to give the information to yourself or your friends. It is a it is an audience. So you need to consider how your the the, the your topic how how will it uh, interest them. So you, the in, important thing is the size of the audience. How many people are there? If it's a small audience, well, your your topic can be more personal or more 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 narrow focus. If it's a huge audience, then you maybe want to have a more more general topic that appeal to a wide range of people. Then the age range are they, are they young people? So I mean, you can, they are they are they are like the school school age children. You cannot talk to them about politics or or religion or anything anything like that. I mean, you should not anyway. But there will be. I mean, you can you cannot talk about more serious uh, topics like that. It has to be something that appeals to them, like maybe some about their, their, their school or their, their, their career, things like that. And also similarly, you cannot, if there's an older audience, you cannot talk about, say, say, pop music or things like that. So they have to be appropriate. Because the last thing you want is to have an audience that is really, that, you, that switches off uh, from you for, with you. So think of the age range. Then your your uh, your are they familiar with the subject? If they I mean if they have a lot of uh, lot of knowledge, if they're experts in something, and then you start and giving a speech, uh, uh, explaining some very basic things, you will be that they will be they will feel that they're they're being patronized, and uh, again that will turn turn them off the to, off of 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 that of you, as well. And um, sort of, uh, so if they uh, uh, and if they don't know, so you need to do some background research. Find out, I mean, about the audience. Who are they? What are their background? What is the educational level? What are their their, their professional background, their expertise, things like that. Yeah, and uh, um, again, the education, interests, backgrounds, all these things you need to need to consider. Then. Uh, in terms of uh, narrowing the selection, selection, you can also the, the look at the uh, what, what the what is the occasion? It is uh, does it have a is it uh, there's a theme? So that is that is a that that makes it very easy for you. If you have ten topics and the uh, and the theme the, um, say the say say you got a, a theme of um, uh, maybe some some self improvement or something. Then it's very easy to to the, you you have some your your topic can be uh, very easily you can choose the one that that to help people to improve themselves. Okay, and then when are when are you should, when is it scheduled scheduled to to speak? So if you if you're at the beginning or the end, if you're of the worst time is before lunch, for example, that's when people are have no before and after lunch. Before lunch they 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 they're not they're looking at the watch. After lunch they may be sleepy. So. If you have ideally, you should if you have it early, early in the morning, and then that, that's that's the best because people are more attentive. Then also consider what will happen after your speech. Well, what is what is going to follow? So, so you can also um, you can also link to 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 to, to the next event, something like that. Then uh, look at your own abilities. How uh, how. There's no point in going to talking about, uh, I mean, nuclear physics or something, and if you have no interest in it, so I would, I would, that I would never consider a topic like that. If you have something in, of your interest, if it relates to your hobby, that's the best thing, because you already know something and your enthusiasm and interest. Because you, you may suppose, suppose you get questions about it. If you have no interest in it, then you really you'll not be able to to handle anything. But if you if you have interest and enthusiastic, that that's 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 ideal. Then your knowledge base. What what how much knowledge you have? Because yeah, you, as I said, you might you might get get uh, question, questions about it, or you might uh, really. You, uh, and the other thing is, if you if you have a superficial interest in it, you may not be able to give a, a unique perspective. But if you have a know something in detail, then it's possible. That you might be able to to, uh, to to identify something, give some information that really adds value to to the to the audience. So so you give gives them something new. And uh, are you an authority? Are you an authority of the on the on the subject? Ideally, uh, the best. I mean, if you have done some research on the topic, 
or if you if you have, if you have written written some articles or even a book on the subject, that 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 means I mean you are that is that, that is the area you should you, you should talk about. The other thing is uh, the you should also be specific. Is it a topic? Uh, is it, uh, is, it, is, it, is it a vague topic, is it a general topic? Then it's, it's very difficult to, to, to fit it into a, to a, to a, certain, a certain amount of time. So, but if it's focused, then, then you, can, you, can, you should be able to, to fit it into that uh, time, time period. Then I get, the other thing is that uh, yeah, the sub points. I mean, the, 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 well, what you should do is that the, the, you have a number of points of your for your speech, and you have also sub points that that, uh, that that give strength that support your your evidence. Could be that the sub points could be like evidence, your your personal experience, and this is what adds. Uh, uh, this is where you could put your personal experience or some ad additional sort of information that will strengthen your 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 main point. Then uh, and a very important thing is is uh, uh, sometimes you 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 get carried away. And you have you have too much information. You may be you may be interested in, it, but it may not fit into the time. Also, uh, may, maybe it's something that the audience isn't interested in. They may not be interested in. Uh, and so, if you can focus it and cut down, it's very important. What you cut down, what you, uh, what is left, that's that, that's it's like like uh, like your nuggets, the gold nuggets. So as much as you can, try and reduce reduce it and just focus on the on the key points. So, in my conclusion, I would say the best thing, most important thing, is what you can add is your personal experience, plus all the research. To get the resources could be what you find out from 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 your research, from the internet, from the web, your your background, plus consideration of uh, of how uh, your your various how to narrow down how you narrow down the topic, and this way you can get an like, excellent speech topic. But I would say really, uh, it's uh, well, it it really at the end of the day, it, it doesn't really matter what you talk about. I mean, you can talk about the air, for example. If, if you know something about it, you can talk about really the air or water or anything, really. That, that, that doesn't, doesn't really matter. What is the important thing is you consider these aspects, the, the resources, your, the audience. The, the audience, how, they will they, how will they will react to the speech? Okay, back to you. Thank you very much, DTM uh, Kamal. I will launch a question as a poll. You have 30 seconds to answer them. Which one of the following is not a good idea for a speech topic? Personal interests, reference material, confidential gossip about your best friend. You have 30, 20 seconds from now to answer your question. Time is done. The results are 10%. <clears throat> of course, the, the correct answer is confidential gossip about your best friend. Thank you, DTM Kamal, for your presentation. Now I will go back to, to DTM uh, Lakshman. DTM Lakshman, are you there? Yes, I'm here to ask about H. I will How now you? give you the floor. Your presentation you will for... be yeah. Your presentation will be about concluding your speech now. Yeah. Have you got the PowerPoint presentation for me? Uh, for you, let me just check something more. Polls. Until now, it did not appear. Okay. I'll go ahead then. No problem. Okay. Can I? Go, go ahead, go, please. Thank you, thank you, Toastmaster Bakic. Fellow Toastmasters, good afternoon again. It's Lakshman from Jeddah. We are now looking at this particular presentation called Concluding Your Speech, which is again taken from the Better Speaker series. We are at the moment at the right point of time in discussing these four important topics, organizing the speeches, selecting the topic, beginning the speech, and concluding your speech. Conclusion 
or concluding the speech is the is the most important part one must get the mastery before speaking in the club or area or the district or division even because i personally feel conclusion is like landing if we can consider the three parts beginning middle or end beginning introduction body and the conclusion i think conclusion is very much landing we got the takeoff very good beginning and we flew well which is what which was good uh, content or the body delivery where are we going to land we should be able to land in the airport what i mean is it should be quite smooth and quite persuasive how can that be more effective what can the speaker do to make that particular part of the speech as effective as possible. Achieving a sense of closure is quite important, I believe, because the person, when he speaks, he will naturally go down to the area of the points what he talked about for the last few minutes. And then when he says these words, in the end or in summary, in conclusion, all these will make the people buckle their seatbelt up again. They know that they're going to land properly. This should be done again with an amazing impact. Very, very important. Impact should be there. Well, what are the criteria for, the make, for making that such an impact? As I said, achieving a sense of closure comes only when a person is able to connect that point, what he talked about in the middle or in the beginning, with the personalized touch, rationalized approach. Again, one can go back to that quotation technique. When a person is saying something with a quotation, is simply adding his authority, is adding his convincing nature or a sincere attitude towards the points or towards the areas he touched upon for all these minutes. At the same time, as I said in the beginning, he is not losing the connection with the audience, that invisible connection with it or invisible thread which is connecting with the audience it is kept on, is keeping, is kept with him as an amusing point. He can go back to the dramatization of the speech as he is ending. Once George Bernard Shaw said, some men see things as they are and ask, why I dare to dream of things that never were and ask, why not? So this particular quotation can be used for ending the speech because that will make the audience believe that this person is connecting with the beginning and the center or the body or middle and now he is asking this particular question. So this is a nice way of ending uh, using the quotation. As I told you in the beginning, one can also use a short story which could be as short as possible. It could be even a minute because Toastmasters are uh, experts in giving anything within the time frame of one minute or half a minute that short story can bring the capsule, can, can, can epitomize completely, can be the nutshell. Oh yes, I'm carrying this message because it is giving in a nice uh, story form, anecdote can be there. But develop quickly because you are landing already. When you're landing, you should be careful that the red signal is already there, it should not go more than 13 uh, seconds. That should be done in a nice manner, make it short, reinforce the message. Call for action. That's very, very important. If you talk about, for example, drug abuse throughout the speeches, started with the drug abuse as a topic and then you went on giving some examples in the middle or the center part of your speech, the call for action should be something like you go home and ask your children, get their opinion and tell them that you love them. When these things are used, again, I've seen sometimes some audiences, members of audience started even shedding tears because they feel that it is quite emotional, it is quite binding, and they feel that this is the message for them to carry. So that must be done by the Toastmaster. Whether he's winning or not, that is the second, that is immaterial. But that should be done at any cost. 
clearly explain what action the audience should take. If it is positive, go for more positive. If it is something which is corroding the society, which is not good for society, go for giving the or explaining the negative aspects of that particular behavior in your society. Call for action. Closing technique can also be something like this. Can we afford to do this? Can we afford not to? It's something like to be or not to be. It's a rhetorical question. Again, to be or not to be can be used in so many ways. Whatever the topic you're discussing, bring that rhetorical touch and then people, wow, he is giving that Shakespearean quote, but it is very much assimilated to this topic he's talking about. So I'm taking the message. I got it. So that should be the feeling, that should be the end result at the end of the speech of the speaker. One should not forget that one can also touch the beginning of the speech while one is ending the speech. I think I want to make, make my point quite, quite clear here. One can even say, I began my remarks by reviewing the challenges our company must confront. Or one can say, I began my speech giving the drawbacks of drug abuse. And this is what happened. I, we have seen that. And this is what you have to do when you go home. This is what we can call as the connecting, connecting, connecting. Not only with the beginning, middle, end, also with the audience. And that should happen like 180 degrees, like lighthouse. Uh, lighthouse, one should have the eye contact from left to the right, from right to the left. If it goes on happening throughout the speech, that conclusion, I'm sure my Dato's Masters is going to be uh, the most effective one one can make uh, in the speech on the stage. One should also know this is very important. Repetition, which is very important, repetition reinforces your message. If you summarize your main points with the repetition, again and again, people feel that this person is connecting again, saying these views again because he is sincere. He is wanting us to go home with the change in the behavior. If that happens, he's again successful speaker. One can even memorize the speech conclusion. For example, I would like to end my speech with this topic statement. One can come back again because when we start the speech, we start with the topic statement. We go to the beginning, begin at the middle part, we're doing supporting statements, supporting sentences. At the end again, we go back to the starting statement, which can be startling statement as you said in the beginning. Make that happen in time. One should be very careful because the conclusion part is the only part where people lose their, themselves. They go beyond the time. It's easily 7.35, 31. I've seen people, uh, wonderful speech, amazing speech, but it is 7.32. It's disqualified. It's very much important that one should end on time. Refrain from adding new points at the end of the speech. I think all the Toastmasters would agree with me. When you have done the speech, well, it happens. You first of all draft the speech. In the drafting speech itself, you have got the beginning part, you have got organization, you have got selecting topic, you have got conclusion. Everything is done. You have practiced this. You have done the five Ps. What do we mean by five Ps? Proper practice prevents poor performance. Always believe that. It will happen. It will help us. So conclusion is nothing but proper practice prevents poor performance. If we have done all the Ps, there will be no poor performance. It will be absolutely amazing conclusion. Again, one must mention that something in the beginning, that topic, that energy, that power should be maintained right from the first sentence one is uttering to the last sentence one is uttering. There should be no dearth or scarcity of energy throughout the speech. People, in fact, should look for where did he go uh, without the energy. Everywhere there was energy. So I would like to conclude again saying this Longfellow statement which says clearly, Great is the art of beginning, but greater is the art of ending. So if one is taking that much uh, clarified approach in writing the speech and drafting the speech and preparing well in front of the mirror as many times as possible and following all these five Ps and giving that sincerity, sincere message to the audience, of course the audience will not forget that speaker, let alone the award. Award can come and go, but 
the message will never ever be forgotten by the audience if the speaker is highly committed and highly convinced and highly sincere. Back to you, Toastmaster Bahij. Thank you. Thank you, DTM Lakshman, for this uh, valuable presentation. And sorry for the inconvenience concerning the PowerPoint presentation. It's due to technical difficulties. I will launch two questions about beginning and concluding your speech now. The first question is, one good way to begin your speech is to start by talking about the weather or by doing a microphone check or with a great quote related to the topic. You have 20 seconds more to answer this question. Time is done. We're going to share the results. The results are, of course, 100%, a great quote related to your topic. Our next question is about is about uh, one of the way, best ways to conclude your speech. Let's launch it with a call to an action, with a related quote to make the audience think, remind them about what you just told them, all of the above, A and B alone. You have 15 additional seconds to do it, to answer it. Ta Time is up. Of course, all of the above is the best answer. We, all of them are good ways to conclude a speech. And at the end, I believe that uh, this is uh, any. This is uh, everything for today. I would like to thank everybody of you to for listening, for dedicating your precious time. To us, I hope you have enjoyed the, presenta the four presentations that were delivered by three of our distinguished Toastmasters. I'm looking forward to see you in any future webinars. Thanks for listening. And 